Hey folks, well, thanks for stopping in. Richie and I were just bitching about people bitching about metal detectorists. <laughs> uh, how much snow do we have in right now? I've got about two and a half feet setting on the ground. Um, I guess that's about the same where I'm at, too. Yeah, let me uh, pop this up differently here so we can talk a little bit before we get into it. <coughs> yeah, Kevin Mann, he's in. In town, Orange State here. You got two feet over the last seven days. Yeah, I, I don't mind getting those storms, but just a week apart, that, that's, it's a lot to deal with. But, yeah, we're, we're waiting. I'm watching the river. The uh, With that rain and snow that we did get in there, it did actually raise the river up. But um, as far as, you know, how much it's putting out right now. So hopefully in the spring we'll have a good snowpack, and that will – push a lot of stuff down yeah the snow it'll all melt eventually you oh, just gotta well. be patient yeah yeah uh, let's see i'm just gonna go through and say quick hi to everybody that's jumped in we got gary gary's metal detecting jason from bc treasure trails nancy ambient girl digs uh swamp rat nation kevin mann uh david alfonsetti let me see. I saw a Mike Malley man jump in. Joel from Drone Detect. Might have some more people jump in. Uh, Brenda, Brenda from Mama. Yep, uh, Mama's gone detecting. Which at some point here, Brenda, um, get stuff together here. I'll I'll send you out those uh, glass shards from last year. Uh, we also have Rebecca from uh, uh, Main Dirt Sweepers, and uh, who else did I see? Eaton Beach uh, Treasures, Natalie. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, we're just going to continue on down the river from where we left. Mike um, wants to see the T-shirt. Oh, there you go. There you go, Mike. That's a nice T-shirt. Yep. Is that from uh, you getting uh, put into that book? No, no, that I ordered that. When do I you want, do you want to mention that about you and being put into that? Well, probably some of the people in here. I know uh, Mike Mallyman is going to be in it. Yeah, I saw um, his name. Chris from who who make writes the books from the ground up is putting together a profiles book. It's supposed to be out sometime in March, and I'm one of the profiles. Everyone has to write their own profile, send in some pictures of like your favorite find and all that kind of stuff. So. That was good. Somebody's making some books like that. I I haven't seen I haven't gone or have one yet. So, but yeah, it's nice to see those all collected in one place instead of searching them through the internet which is hard but um yeah you guys have to bear with me a little bit I'm, i ended up having that head cold there three weeks ago and i ended up getting it again so voice is a little hoarse and if i get caught up i'll have richie speak for me <laughs> um but oh let's see here i think the screen would probably be better this way yeah, Nancy, thank you for putting that up. Uh, that's Chris's book from the ground up. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of curious, though. I'd like to really see that one that you guys are being put into, you know, the profiles and stuff. It makes it a little bit more interesting when you can put that face with uh, with finds and stuff, too. You know, we got Rocky Mountain Life Prospect, and thanks for stopping in. Yeah, Gary, I said... The question is... Everyone look at their uh, screen. Are, are the uh, pins upside down or are they right side up? Yeah, they should be. Um, I, I, look. I'm looking at Dennis's here on, on my phone and they're right side up. But on my screen, they're upside down. Yeah, let me know. I, I don't think there's really much I can do about it, though. Uh, Mike says they're good. Oh, good. Yeah, good there. It's just. All right. Might just it's be, fine, I guess. Yes. Actually, it says five and four minutes. So maybe if I click on it, something will happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, yeah, this is the next the next clip down the river from where we left off there two weeks ago. Um, as you guys can see, the upper part of the river in the picture is the basically the inside corner of this river, the whole left side of this river going down is the inside corner um watching a lot of gold videos i see them say hunt the inside part of the rivers um 
and as you can see you know there's definitely more pins on the other side you know and once i was able to start adding all of these pins you guys can start to see that these <laughs> you know where things will gather more on one side or the other which is tends to be the inside um but things definitely can be anywhere along this whole whole piece um just some of these places we can't get to right yet hopefully when they drain the river maybe um but yeah if you guys have any questions about the uh google earth um i did have another picture where i was able to have an overlay um which you can do with google earth so you can take older maps and you can put put them over you know what you got now and kind of see um got a few other people that jumped in uh Anthony, Brooklyn Treasure Hunter, and Jeff's Obsessions. Thanks for stopping by. I, I fixed the problem, Dennis. I, you did? I rebooted the page. It was showing, um, live, going live in four minutes, and it was stuck there. When I, when I got caught up, it, it flipped over the other way. A YouTube thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. All right. Bring this picture up. Okay, this is right down by the bridge. And, you know, from la the other week and, you know, these last few clips, that's pretty much up in between the dams. Um, where you see the red line going across, that's where the old wooden dam was put up, I would say, back in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And that got washed away. Where the light orange line is, that's where the stone dam had been. That one had gotten washed out by um, floods as well. Now, what's um, the what's that wooden thing that's down here? That oh, we uh, see when we right, go down there. Is it yeah, part right. of the old dam or part of the old bridge? No, that's part of the old dam um, where those uh, logs are sticking out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right about where that red line is going across. Um, the original dam was just a wooden dam, and then the second one, that orange line, was made with a uh, stacked stone. And once we get to the next clip or picture there, you'll see where, you know, the dam is now. But uh, right down next to the bridge, that's pretty deep, even when we had the drought there last year or two years ago. And there's silt that builds up under here. And each year they go up with a, or every so year, so many years, they go up with a bucket loader and they pull out a bunch of that silt. Um when they do redo this bridge down here in the bottom, they're, you know, they're probably going to have to do that. And we're going to try to find out where they're dumping all the spoils. Um, I've found many coins down in there. I found a couple of rings. Um, and that sand down there is probably four to five feet deep. So I know there's a bunch of stuff in there. And if we can figure it out and organize it enough, then, you know, we'll try to get a bunch of people down here uh, to hunt different parts of it. Um, Mike wants to know uh, if you put these pins in as you go or yeah um, and that's an, uh, that's a very important thing um, if you can as soon as you get home from your hunt put them in they're going to be fresh in your mind um, there was one summer that I just got lazy and I weren't putting my pins in and I had to go back and watch every one of my videos and guess, I mean, it's all a guesstimate anyways. They're not down to GPS points um, because in this river, things rise up and you lose definition of rocks and places. But it's per relatively close to where I found, you know, everything. Um, and a lot of times in your videos, you can go back and you can pick a landmark or a tree or something. And you can kind of know where you are, where you are. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, can, Johnny Smallpepper. You can kind of tell where we walk across there where the pins get close to the middle, where yeah. the ledge is. Yeah, right where that red line is. Um, in the summertime, when it's low, you can you can pretty much walk across there. Oh, we um, have. Oh, yeah, we have. And, you know, there's, there's just, you know, certain places that are going to be deep holes and you just can't get to them unless you're not wearing waders and you don't mind going underwater fully. Um, which for the right signal? I, I definitely would probably take my waders off and go for a short dive. Um, but, all right. Let's see. And as you guys saw, too, that um, most of those finds are still on the inside of the river. Uh, let me do a 
do. Yeah, there's a lot less territory on that side to hunt, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Up near the top is about where the, the edge of the dam is up there. In that big red circle, there's that pool that I've talked about many times. And I had a young gentleman that lives over in a house, one of these ones down on the lower left-hand side. Um, he went out there and he sounded it and he told me it was approximately 30, 35 feet deep. So you've got to figure how much stuff is stuck down in there and what month of nature would need to do to move it out up into these other areas. Um, these shallows, the way you see all these pins at. Um, not this past December, but the one before in the video, all of this that was in this uh, red, that was just roaring water just coming down there. And down near the island in the middle this past spring, I found a beautiful toy gun just laying right there. Um, so definitely things get pushed down each year. It just really Mother Nature has to help you. And Now, uh, now on, on the left edge of that red circle, I see in an island. Is that Treasure Island? That's what we nicknamed Treasure Island right there. Okay, we I don't. I don't see my uh, change purse. I put our brooches, which is Richie's brooches, because you found two right about that same area. And yeah, yeah. A lot of the time, I don't really get to see everything Richie pulls out in the same, you know, in that spot. So. So if you go between the brooches and the baby spoon, I'm like halfway in there. Yep. And that's an all that's all of a shallow spot too. So things you can see where the water's coming down, where it brushes down through there, uh, that circle. And a lot of stuff gets deposited right over onto the side with a lot of sand. And then it's pretty much ledge right across that left hand side. Um, where that white line is going from the shoreline to that top of that island, that is all ledge and you can walk across that. Hence why you can see um, little pins there but you can only go out from that white line towards that gw token and then it drops off to about 10 15 feet right there and that's all that giant gully um so any coins and stuff that's popped up and you know that's in that deep hole hopefully someday it'll just get caught down in here and all all these pins right here most of these are all found tucked into the ledge um but yeah Things will keep on moving. And just, above, just above that on the left is your cave, too. Yeah, where we saw those otters this year. Um, I'm going to try to get some better pictures of them uh, next year. Or this year. Yeah, I, I'm all messed up, guys. This cold still frigging with me. Hey, Darcy, you know, thanks for stopping in. Um, I really haven't been keeping an eye on the uh, chat. I haven't just, either. Go back. I don't see any questions. If you guys have any questions... Feel free. Ask them. I'll try to catch them if we get them. Uh, hey, Ben, how are you tonight? Um, let's see. Uh, have I tried magnet fishing in that deep hole? Um, out about where you see the uh, 1914 Gillette Canteen, um, that's about as deep as you can go in the sand and it starts to get real deep in that, you know, in that circle. I've thrown a magnet out there a little ways. But I'm definitely not hitting where the deep spot is. Um, my plans on this year, and maybe Richie will do it too. I've got a couple of magnets, but I'd like to take the kayaks right out in the middle of there and just drop them down, see what we can pull out. Um, my swimming skills are pretty good. I don't, I, yours I can, is probably. I can, I can swim, <laughs> but we'll have life vests on anyway. Right. Uh, Mike Underwood and uh, Dennis from SWFL. Um, thanks for stopping in, guys. Uh, I need to bring Scuba Sonia up to dive on that. I've been trying to get, oh, many people. Um, I do have a few friends um, that I keep in touch with um, that plan on wanting to come up and dive this year. Uh, so we'll see. Um, one of them can only dive up to 15 feet because he's not licensed. And um, I'm not sure about the other people, but. I can guarantee you down at the bottom of that deep hole, there is stuff caught down there. Um, uh, ben wants to know if you think it's ledge in that deep hole. I, 
I really don't think so. I think there's a lot of sediment that comes down from, you know, upstream. And a lot of that is all sand. Where I found that 1914 Gillette canteen, um, that was about up to my chest. And when I put my face or went to dig down to, I had to stick my head into the water. Um, it's that deep. Uh, that sand deposit that's in there, that could be 10 feet deep. And, you know, 220 years of stuff being put into that river, there could be stuff mired down in there but you know that river's forever flowing and that sand's forever moving so it's like you can see these areas where all these uh, pins are we've been over those and that's just keeping adding stuff every year um so it's really mother nature has to kind of bring it up to a level where we can hit it with a detector and um you know just pull them out but there's stuff there that I'll never touch in my lifetime because it, it won't erode that fast. Oh, let's see. Um, ben said, uh, you think, okay. Yeah, no, it, there is some ledge down there, Ben, but I think most of it's sand deposit. Um, would you would love to see the view from down there? Just hope that's too much. I don't know as if there's a whole lot of wood debris down in there. It could be, but that is very dark, brackish water. So I'm not sure. They're going to definitely need a light source to get down in there. Um, if we ever got Aqua Chigger up here, he could bring his little, uh, little sub that he has um, with a camera on it. That would be interesting to see down at the bottom. You know, they make um, drones for the water now, too. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's what he has. It's a, it's probably you know, a couple feet wide by long, but it's a nice little uh, drone, and it's it's just really hard to say what would be down there. Yeah. Uh, DF Digger, I need to say something about another channel if it's okay. Um, if it's peaceful, I have no problems about it. Um, <laughs> just. Yep, keep it civil, and we're we're good to go. Um, Mike, I would like I would love to be there when they dive. If I do end up getting some divers up here to come up, um, I'd really the best year is if they take that bridge out and they drain the river. That's going to make these deep holes as low as they'll ever go. Um, where that light white line is down by the island, that ledge is there. And it goes pretty much straight across. Even with the drought that we had, that's as far as that water was going to go down where that ledge is up by the island. That deep hole is never going to get drained. Um, so definitely would need to have some divers. But if we do, um, yeah, I'm, I usually put it out on Facebook anyways if we have hunts or group hunts or things coming up. So, um, yeah, we definitely get somebody up here if you guys want to come up just see that'd be great but we will definitely do um videos of it uh, let me see and is there probably is where the gold coin is um <laughs> yeah i'm always hoping so dude the last you know i found a nice you know canadian uh, i think it was an 1892 that was just an inch underneath the sand down, just down past this island which we're going to go to on this next screen, which will probably be the last one. Um, but yeah, that had to have been pushed down that spring or, you know, last spring. Let's see. Here. Yeah, and right at the top of the screen is where that island is up there. Now there's and, some pins for you. Yeah, definitely a lot of work keeping them on there but um this part of the river it, there's really not as much of an inside bend there is but it's pretty flat on both sides so you do see a lot of pins you know throughout this is the part that gets really shallow doesn't it yeah down here um past this island is at times you know it's it's at your ankles um, there's a few deep spots like over on the left hand side where you see those pockets where there's no finds 
those there are just too deep to get into. Um, yeah, the the river's just, you know, it's how it's made up. And, you know, and, and I've hunted this many, many times. And as you hunt your own rivers, you'll start to see how it flows, you know, where things are easily found, you know, compared to not. Um, let me see here. Uh, we have at least seven channels involved already and several hundred dollars for this so far. Many giveaways too, silver coins, sticker packs, cash, who knows what else. That was from Dennis. Um, Oh, the snowpack's looking good there, Darcy. We got two and a half feet on the ground, so the runoff, um, it should push some stuff down. Um, that's kind of like uh, kind of what we hope for each year. Uh, let me kick this uh, guy. How long have I been mapping? I've been doing it for four years. Um, actually, I've been doing it ever since I started um, metal detecting the because I found Google Earth before I started metal detecting. And um, as soon as I uh, did that, or I started, um, I felt this was a great way to, you know, kind of keep in memory where things were. And this only shows up on your computer, so you don't have to worry about other people looking in, um, finding where you found stuff. But, and this is the Pisco Taco Wawawa. Joel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when the floods happened way back in the day, I wonder if a structure floated down away intact and broke up in particular spots. Uh, the covered bridge up in Guilford, uh, the next town up, uh, when that got flooded out in 87, that made it all the way down into town. Parts of it pushed this bridge, and part of the reason why this bridge needs to be replaced is um, structures have have hit it and um it's moved that bridge you know little inches by inches on top of that the footing is just pretty much built on the ledge so the force of the water over time everything's been pushing that down um that's you know like when you look at all the pins you you just see a mixture of everything you know and that came from people's houses farms businesses um maybe just stuff they threw away um let's see oh but yeah I, there's been four major floods darcy in the 220 years that have that have done that so things we've we found stuff well over five six miles worth of this river i dig a dan king clad hey dan how you doing bud uh dennis uh how have you been dennis uh what do you do in the winter absolutely nothing um we clean I, up from snowstorms is what we do yeah and i watch you know that's my chance to get on online and watch other people's videos um but there's there's a growing number of people metal detecting putting out videos which is good to see but it's very hard to keep up with everybody's so you know you do your best you know and try to catch as many as you can uh have you detected that field on the right side of the photo uh yes i have uh rippendale um actually let me do this real quick i put is that up, the one that is that the one where the tall grass is no that's was? that's the browns mills field i put in a, a picture here i wanted to show you guys it's an overlay i don't know if i can find it here Give me a second. My eyesight sucks. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so this was an overlay that I was able to put onto this, which kind of, you know, it's not going to be perfect. You can stretch out the pictures and stuff. But um, on the right the old, hand. The old map makers weren't exact anyway no and you try to fit it to the picture the best you can but that field if you if you look if you go across the bridge and you take that right those big buildings that's where the mill is and you can see that there were old other buildings let me make that a little bigger 
there were other buildings down in that field. Um, when they made this park and they've torn these buildings out, there is just metal everywhere spread all over those fields. Um, definitely could have coins in there. Um, but I'd say, well, 100% of the stuff I've found in that field has been junk. And um, I usually do it in the spring, the first place you can hit. But, um, yeah, there's got to be coins down there, too. It, when that mill got shut down, or when they shut it down, they had EPA come in. And they had to clean out a tremendous amount of chemicals that was left over from that mill. So I'm not sure how much of the top coat they've taken, um, but they've made other fields and a lot of that top coat from there went in to make other fields, which are finding those same factory parts in those other places, which, like I said, there still could be a coin. There could be a watch. Who knows down through there? Um, what, what kind of mill was that? That was a woolen mill. So they had a lot of dye. You know, those chunks of that blue crap that we find in the river there. It's yeah. old dye, dye clots and stuff like that. But um, nothing, nothing too serious. Only take 10 years off your life. No big deal. Yeah. That's why you only eat one fish meal out of the rivers in Maine a year. <laughs> I um, don't eat fish anymore. So I don't, eat, don't even need any. No. Uh, but I'm not going to keep this any longer there. Uh, I'll just, we'll finish this up here. Um, keep removing the jump. And oh yeah, I'm sure there is stuff in there, Darcy, but I'd rather be in that water if I could be. Uh, no bugs. Uh, Big B, there's an old mill dam site in Borough, on Borough Road, just past the Dover Sangerville line. Have you ever detected that site? Um I know where you're talking about. Um it's out behind where the Dunkin' Donuts is now down in that area. And I haven't been down there, though. Maybe this year. Um, 2023, next year, they do the bridge and they, they drain this river. Um, I'd love to get as many people up here because I'm not going to have the time to search it all. We definitely need help. Um, all right, guys. Um, we got uh, Ben and Rebecca. Uh, they're up next on uh, Main Dirt Sweepers. Yeah, they're premiering. And next week. Uh, next week, we have Amanda Diggas coming on, which we're very excited for. Um, we'll have some uh, surprises, some sticker packs and stuff that we're going to give out. And, uh, yeah, I've been wanting to have her on for a long time. She's down from southern Maine, and she uh, hunts the rivers, and she digs up a lot of the same stuff we do. So, uh, yeah, to me, it's very interesting. I love finding that stuff in the rivers. But, all right, folks, um, thank you for stopping by, and we'll continue down the river in another two weeks. And uh, as we get down the river, you're going to start seeing where the bends and turns in the river, but you'll still see where these finds end up. So if you enjoyed it, kind of like how it's going, then uh, please join us again. Rich? Good night, everyone. I hope you were entertained. All right, folks, have a good night, and uh, we'll see you over at Ben and Rebecca's.